All right, let's talk strikers. What is going on with the striker position, James? Harry Kane, Darwin Nunez, what's happening? So basically where it's at right now is a little bit confusing on one side of it because um, this ties back to the manager situation. I know that United are looking at a lot of young strikers. Apparently, I've been told they made somewhat of an informal offer for uh, Victor Osimhen from Napoli, but the problem you have with Napoli is that the president is a bit nuts and um, asks for insane amounts of money for his players. So while United were willing to pay somewhere in the range of 70 to 80 million, he's wanting 125, which sounds very similar to the Kaladu Kulabali situation a few years ago, where he wanted 125 million for a 30 year old center back. Um, Asim Hen has at 13 goals as his highest total in a league campaign. That is not a 125 million striker. He's a good player. He's really talented. He's doing well. Napoli are doing awesome. They're in the race to win the league. They're trying. Um, But 125 million is insane in this market. It's insane. But that's Napoli. So I think you could write that off. Here's where it ties in confusingly to Harry Kane, and then I'll touch on some of the other targets. We were told a little bit ago that Pochettino had asked for Harry Kane, wanted them to explore it from someone I trust, and... Then you get the story a little earlier this week, I think at the start of the week, an exclusive from a couple of journalists who are United reporters and have had a lot of information over the last few years that um, United are writing up another offer for Harry Kane this summer. And they're going back in for him and they're thinking he could rejoin Pochettino. And I've heard the exact same thing uh, ahead of time was that United are preparing an offer for Harry Kane that includes a few players plus cash, in order to bring him in. And uh, that relates to the clear out. Well, you have, I think, three players that Tottenham have expressed interest in in the past that are on their way out of the club, supposedly. Dean Henderson, they need to refresh at goalkeeper to Hugo Lloris. Um, Donny van de Beek and Anthony Martial. All three of these players are sort of on the verge of leaving or on the edge. And uh, apparently they may be included in an offer for... Uh, Harry Kane. So it's very confusing because, like I said, this is where you get the impression that there are people already working on Harry Kane targets, uh, working on Pochettino targets like Harry Kane. It is happening. They are looking into that. Does that, again, it doesn't mean anything definitive, but they are. They are absolutely looking into it. It's been reported. It's been confirmed. So somebody in the footballing area is still working on Pochettino targets in the assumption that or preparation for him to arrive as recently as in the last couple of weeks and being in discussions with his representatives. So I think it's a little bit of a confusing situation there. If that is not feasible and if that doesn't happen or if Pochettino doesn't come, I think they'll move on to younger strikers. Um, I don't think Nkunku is happening. It's one that Rangnick likes. But from what I understand, the price would be 75, 80 million or higher. And he doesn't just, he just doesn't seem to be necessarily the profile they're looking for in that position right now. So that one they've looked at, you could keep an eye on it, but I just don't think it's happening from what I've heard. And then the other name that I mentioned, Darwin Nunez, that I've talked about, he is doing incredible. He knocked uh, Ajax out of the Champions League in the last few days with the one chance of the game that Benfica got. He's amazing. The problem, the biggest problem there is that Atletico Madrid are extremely hot on him, and if Jao Felix goes somewhere, then they will buy him, and United would have to move quick to get that. If that happens, if they don't get Kane, if they're not getting Nkunku, you have to look at where do they go next, and it is confusing. I don't know who else they might go for. Dominic Calvert-Lewin comes up as a name to be mentioned always from time to time. And maybe they look to just get in another winger with a good bit of money. Um, Ronaldo staying next year, supposedly, seems to be the, the gist of things right now. And that makes it tricky. Maybe get another winger, play a bit of a fluid front three, and see what happens from there. So um, those are the main targets now. We'll get some more information later, but I think it's definitely going to become more clear once the manager situation is nailed down, especially a striker. Mike, 
I know, obviously, you're a Harry Kane guy. But between the names that James mentioned, is it for you, is it manager dependent on who you think is best to get? Or do you think, or do you have a name in mind that is best, regardless of if it's Potch or Den Hag or whoever? I mean, yeah, we should be trying to decide players regardless of manager, shouldn't we? Like, that's the way the best teams do it. It's how Liverpool have done it for years now. I mean, Klopp didn't want Mo Salah, and I think he's happy with him these days. So, uh, in terms of that, though, there's so many strike. Well, there's the top three strikers who I would not. I don't care which one we'd get. If we got one, I'd be perfectly happy, with, which is, yeah, Harry Kane, Robert Lewandowski, and Darwin Nunez, who... By the way, I was definitely standing before James, so just just remember that I was talking about him two years ago. Uh, just wanted to put that one out there. But uh, anyway, I'd take any of those three. I think they'd all all three of them would be great under each manager because they've worked successfully under other managers. Nunez not as much, but that's because he's obviously ten years younger than the other two. But I'd easily take one of the three, and even then, I'd still take Dominic Calvert Lewin. I know he's had a struggle this season with a uh, he broke his toe in. I think it was August, if not early September, and he's missed a lot of games, but he's still been a great player under a good manager. And I think that's the kind of striker United needs is when they have a striker who can hold the ball up a bit, is good aerially, and not just getting on the end of crosses, but getting the end of long balls up to uh, play a bit more vertical. Because that has been a problem for the past few seasons, even with Ronaldo, who's good in the air. He hasn't really been that good of a hold-up striker, and obviously Martial wasn't that good at it, and... Lukaku was terrible at holding the ball. So we're going years back now. We're going to like Zlatan, the Zlatan year. So I'd go with one of those three, if not Calvert-Lewin as well. I'd definitely avoid the likes of Alexander Isak and players like that just because he cannot score. I think he's got three goals this season, which is not good when he has. I don't think he's had a single injury. And I just won't touch Erling Haaland because besides he's starting to get more injury prone, the money is insane. So... I definitely just pick one of those three out of Lewandowski, Kane, Nunez. If I had to rank them, I think you'd have to go with Lewandowski number one because he's the best player in the world at the moment. <laughs> I think that I think that goes. Uh, I think that's easy to say. And then probably Kane, just because he can be a ten and a striker at the same time. He's very Eric Cantonari, to be completely honest, in the way he plays. Uh, which I know a lot of people listening to this won't have watched Cantona, but Harry Kane plays very similar to him even Francesco Totti to an extent. And then, yeah, Darwin Nunez because he has the potential and stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't know how he'd work. Uh, he'd be a bit more of a long-term option, I feel, and he wouldn't just come in straight away and score a lot of goals at the other two.